So now I'll go to a different model, and I'm a 1,1 model with an AR parameter of 0 0.8 and a moving average parameter of 0 0.6. And notice this is the R definition, so it equals corresponds to minus phi 1 equals to minus 0.8. Now I just want to plot first the data, then plotting the autocorrelation function. And we see a lot of oscillations up here, well, appearing as oscillations. The ACF goes exponentially to zero. And if we look at the partial autocorrelation function, well, we've got something significant like one and like two and maybe something like three, but that's about it. Now, what I want to do repeatedly as well is to run the Young Box test to see if there's any cumulative information in the autocorrelation function. In this case, of course, there is, because even just the AR1 or the lag1 information is there. So what I do here is that I want to fix up to lag14 as default. Then I use the S apply to run the box test function for each of the values from 1 to 14 in this case, and I want to use the Young box test to do so, and I just care about the p-value. And then I will plot those, and I want to just add the 5% level of significance, and we can see that for all lags up to lag 14, as a significant dependence. In order not to run all these plotting commands every time I have estimated a model and look at the residuals, what I have here in the following lines, just do so you can see it, is a function that is meant to use on just some data, just some observation. So if you give it a class of ARIMA, it will take out the residuals from that model and use that as the data. Then it will store your parameter setting um, for your graphics over here. And on exit, it will re repeat, it return it to what it was before. Then it will do the exact same plot as here, the ACF and the partial autocorrelation function and you can give it some extra arguments up here. I could also add that to the plot as well. And the last bit here down here is to do the young box plot down there. So let me just execute that. And just for testing, I can do my check dot of what did I call the data up here? Arme 11 or 1.1. One one. So I got the exact same plot, that's ha good. Now, from what I see over here, what is most clear is that I have an exponential tail here, which means there should be an autoregressive part. And then when I look at it down here, I could say actually it's just an AR2, but I want to be a little bit careful and step carefully. So I will just start by estimating an AR1 model. So I specify an AR1 model here, Oops. Let me just see what it returned me. So the first thing I notice is that the intercept again is not significant. In this case, I have so many observations, so it really doesn't matter so much. Um, we can remove it later. First, I want to make sure that I have a mo model that is meaningful before actually st starting to trust the uh, test results. So we have to know that the residuals are independent in the appropriate way. So if we look at the residuals up here, well, it looks much more white than it was before. And indeed, the autocorrelation, there's something left at like one, but other than that, it's quite nice. The partial autocorrelation function, well, there's something in like one and like two. So Right now, you can say the simpler is the ACF. This is an indication. And, and we still, for the Young Box test, we see, still see a significant dependence all the way out because we have something here in lag one. Now, here we have the simpler behavior in the ACF and the more complex down here. So this is actually a good indication that what we're missing could be a moving average part. 
So let's just try to fit an ARMA 1,1 model here. Get some parameter estimates. And let's plot the residual plots from this model here. You cannot say much about the difference up here. It still looks nice for the residuals. The ACF is nice. There's nothing that sticks out. The partial autocollation function, well, there's one, like 15, that is just outside. But since we have around 25, well, and it's a 95% five, five interval, we should expect at least one, maybe two, to be outside at random. And now the p-values for the young box are all much above the 0 0.05. So we are generally happy about this behavior. But when we look at the first diagnostic plot, when we look at the first diagnostic plot, this one here, we could see that we actually could have looked at this as being an AR2 pro model. So let's try also to fit an AR2 model and see what happens if that was the case. And if we look at the diagnostic plots of this, again, we mostly there's one here in DAC2 that sticks out a little bit. It also does so in the partial autocollision function, so it's not perfect. We can also see that the young box test is significant for DAC2. So this would not be a good model. But let's also compare the AR2 model with the ARMA 1,1 model. So here we have the AR2 model, and here we have the ARMA 1,1 model. Of course, the parameter estimates are not the same because it's not the same model. I think what is more interesting is how can we actually compare, say, if the residual plots were equally nice for both models, how can we pick which one is better? So the first thing to say is, are these two models nested? Yes or no. So what does it mean that models are nested? It means that you can go from one model to the other by setting one parameter zero. Now you can go for the AR2 model to an AR1 model by setting one of the AR parameters to zero. But then you have the moving average mo part down here. You can also go for an ARMA 1,1 model to an AR1 model by setting the MA parameter to zero, but you cannot go from the ARMA 1,1 model to an AR2 model by setting one parameter to zero, and the same applies the other way around. So these models are not nested. They do have the same number of parameters. In both cases, the intercept is not significant, but that means that since it's not nested, we cannot use the likelihoods to compare. What we can use is the Akaiki's information criteria, and then we want to pick the one that has the lowest value, and that is, in this case, the ARMA 1,1 model. So that is one criteria that we can use when things are not nested. In the particular case, since the number of parameters is also the same, it also corresponds to picking the one with the highest uh, likelihood. Remember that the AIC has a penalty of two for each parameter. So it's two times the log likelihood, negative log likelihood, plus two times the number of parameters that I estimated. But nevertheless, the ARMA 1,1 model is the best that we could get in the particular case. When we used ARIMA to estimate parameters, we have a lot of things that we can set. Also including a seasonal part if we want to do that. It's just a list with the order given in the same way as the seasonal part and then the period. But what I want to get to is the optimization method, where you can have the default being the conditional sum of squares and then maximum likelihood, or a pure maximum likelihood, or a pure conditional sum of squares. So the conditional sum of squares is similar to what we did in my example earlier on. The full likelihood, well, that's the full likelihood. And the combination is to use the conditional sum of squares, which is very computationally fast, as an initial estimate when starting the maximum likelihood estimation. Because then we are close to the true li maximum likelihood estimate when we start our algorithm. 
just to show the difference, I want to just do a condition sum of square estimate for the AMA 1,1 model for the same here. And what you can see here is that, well, the estimated parameters here goes from 0.8776 to 0.8812. So given the standard error, they are very, very close. Likewise for the moving average part, and the intercept is also it's down to the third decimal point where you have differences. And the difference here is that we just neglect the first, only the first observation here. So there's one thing here is that now we only get a partial log likelihood for this because we exclude the first observation. So we cannot do likelihood observation and therefore we, since we don't have the likelihood value we cannot do AIC. But we can say that well we can we know that we are just conditioning on the first one. So we know what is the difference here. And if we exclude the mean value and again use the CSS and I just forgot to print it. What you will see is well the likelihood here is a little bit lower. Of course, whenever you exclude a parameter that is in the model, you would expect to get a lower likelihood, but the difference is very, very small, also indicating that it is indeed not significant, that intercept. And if you look at the other parameters estimates, we're down to actually change in the fourth decimal there, and up here is on the third decimal point that we actually have changes. So. As said before, if you have enough observations, including the mean in the initial model evaluations, until you get to a model where the criteria for the residuals being white noise is reasonably fulfilled. This is the AR2 model where it's not so nice. Um, it's worth just focusing on up to getting a nice diagnostic plots before starting looking too much at what is significant and what is not. Another and slightly more complicated example is an armor 3, comma 1 model here. And f at first, let me just plot the data. Looks like this. There's not so much to say. You can just see a process. It seems it has some tendency to go a little bit up and down behind the scenes, but otherwise it's, it's quite oscillating. Now, let's just look at the diagnostic plot that we used before of the same process here. We can see that definitely we have a signal in the ACF here. It looks like some exponential with some periods on. Also, the partial autocollation function has something like 1, 3, and 4, and even 5. And then what is out here in 15 is probably noise. And the young box is not so interesting right now because we are just starting. Now, you could again here take well, needs an AR and do some steps slowly. In the needs of time, I will jump directly to an ARMA 2,1 model. And what did we get here? We estimated some parameters here, but before spending too much time on that, we should just look at the diagnostics. And they have improved to some extent. We removed some of the information at the beginning of the SCF, but we still have something at a longer range. The partial autocollation function also still has something in like three, four, and five. So we're definitely not done yet. The question is how to proceed. You could argue that, well, you have the longest piece of information in the ACF, so the appropriate thing is to add more auto equation to increase the order there. So let's do that and estimate an ARMA 3,2,1 instead of the ARMA 
2,1 model we estimated down here. We can also look here. These models are nested, so we can actually test many ways. But just a quick look at the AIC. It's much smaller, by 100 smaller for the most recent model compared to the previous one. Let's look at the diagnostic plots. Now the ACF looks great. The partial autocorrelation function has something like 17, but I mean really that's among those that we can accept as error. And the young box, also up to like 14, that we said as maximum, is behaving quite nice. So we are sufficiently happy here.